So let's have a look at a, a speed distance time calculation. And with practice, these become um, reasonably straightforward. But um, the battle's really understanding what information you need. And often the questions have more information in them than you actually need to try and uh, to try and potentially catch you out a little bit. So if you're again, as ever, if you understand the theory, then um, we understand what the question is asking us. So let's uh, let's have a look at what it's actually asking us then. So it's saying that we are finding aircraft at a true airspeed of 100 knots. So in the cockpit, we're going to see our indicated airspeed. Um, if you've got a fancy uh, Garmin display, you might have the uh, the true airspeed indicated as well. Or otherwise, you'll have, you'll have calculated your expected true airspeed for that altitude. And then you've got a tailwind of 25 knots. How much time is needed for a distance of 165 nautical miles? So if we're flying along at 100 knots, we have 25 knots of wind uh, coming up our behind. That tells us we're going to go in faster, doesn't it? So again, if you're unsure, draw an arrow on, on a draw diagram, draw an arrow. That tells us we're going to be going faster. So 100 plus 125 tells me I'm going to be going across the ground at 125 knots so that's my ground speed and that's the number that i'm interested in is how fast i'm going across the ground not how fast i'm going through the air so that's our first uh, number that we need and then it's uh, a matter of calculating how much time it's going to take so if you are comfortable with formula and rearranging formula um, if you remember the, the the formula speed equals distance over time, and again with any formula, it's just a matter of memorising it and just re again, as I said before, I just memorise them by just repeating them again and again and again. So speed equals distance over time. If you, as I say, if you're confident at rearranging formula, you can do that. If you're not, that's absolutely fine. Um, the easiest way to remember a formula like this is to draw this diagram. So um, a triangle with speed S D T on it, and whatever as i draw it out as a triangle and hold your thumb over whatever you're trying to work out and that'll tell you the formula so if i'm trying to work out time i hold my finger over the the t over here and then that tells me my formula is time equals distance over speed so i've got my numbers that i got from my question before so if i go back i'm Distance over speed. So distance is 165. Speed is that ground speed, remember? That's the number we want, not our airspeed. And if I divide one over the other, that gives me an answer of 1.32 hours. Now, that's kind of semi-useful um, as a unit uh, displayed. Like this is a decimal, 1.32. But actually, we're interested in hours and minutes. And that's what the question will ask you um, the answer in as well so there's a few ways of tackling this um, if you've uh, not got a scientific calculator you could divide uh, 32 by 60 and that will give you that uh, that second part in um, in minutes but as I keep saying you're allowed a scientific calculator in the exam so let's use a scientific calculator and I'll show you how to do that so as ever, it's my favourite button, the DMS button. So uh, we're going to go 165 divided by 125. And as we've seen before, that gives an answers of 1.32 hours. But then if we click this DMS button, um, uh, degrees, minutes and seconds, I click that. That then tells me that means it's one hour, 19 minutes and 12 seconds. So that's a really quick way of then converting that into minutes and seconds. So um, on the multiple choice, it won't be interested in seconds. So there should be an answer of one hour, 90 minutes or something close to that. So I hope that's been useful. And as ever, please feel free to leave any comments before.